Win or lose, no one expects Alistair Darling to be Chancellor beyond the coming election. And with wife Maggie at his side, this budget photo call had every appearance of a farewell gesture. But the Chancellor went to the Commons to express pride in his and his party's record. There would be no giveaways. How could there be? After all, he is boxed in by the massive budget deficit and the overwhelming need for cuts to bring it down credibly, but, Alistair Darling argued, not immediately. To start cutting now risks derailing the recovery, which is already bringing down borrowing more rapidly than was expected. We have worked too hard as a country to come through this recession to throw it away now. One of the few proposals to cheer the electorate was aimed at helping people get on the property ladder. I can announce that I will double the stamp duty limit for first-time buyers from midnight tonight from 125,000 to 250,000 for this year. And next. And why the ironic cheers from the Tory benches for that? Well, it's because raising the stamp duty threshold was their policy first. And darling, the political magpie didn't stop there. He paid for the measure with a version of the Liberal Democrats' mansion tax. This relief will be funded through an increase in the stamp duty to 5% for residential property over a million pounds. <laughs> Rarely can a budget have been so nakedly party political, but the most partisan measure would have mystified many voters. We are ready to sign tax information exchange agreements with three additional countries. Watch David Cameron and George Osborne, affecting to look unconcerned, but they knew what was coming. Which, which, which are, Mr Deputy Speaker, Dominica, Grenada and Belize. Belize is Lord Ashcroft's home, and nothing makes Labour backbenchers happier than teasing the Tories over their non-dom party vice chair. What the media and the watching public got today was a real contrast in styles. Alistair Darling is always dry and understated. Even his party political digs have a sort of backhanded quality to them. But David Cameron, well, David Cameron's response was delivered at breakneck speed. It was aggressive. It was punchy peppered with jokes and withering sarcasm. We have gone from the top of the Premier League to the bottom of the conference in 13 wasted years and we say it is time to sack the manager. Yeah. We didn't stop short of insulting government ministers. Yeah. Let's have a look in detail at the appalling mess that the Prime Minister and Baldemort seem to, seem to find so funny. <laughs> Baldemort? Apparently that's some sort of pet name for Liam Byrne, and there was a jibe for his boss too. The Prime Minister and the Chancellor are having a good chat. They're probably discussing what sort of charging fees they can give after the next election. They should listen. Gordon Brown did not like that. Not at all. We need a Conservative government to clean up the mess made by this Labour government to stop another five years of debt, of waste, of taxes. Britain doesn't need this Prime Minister and this Chancellor. It needs new energy, new leadership and values to get this country going again. That's the argument we'll take to the country the moment this man runs out of time and calls that election. As ever, most MPs left before Nick Clegg spoke, but the Liberal Democrat leader knows when the campaign gets going, his arguments will be given more of an equal footing. Labour is in denial. The Conservatives are talking tough to cover the truth. They offer more of the same. We needed a budget that gave us honesty in spending and fairness in tax. We got neither. Liberal Democrats are putting our cards on the table. Compared with the tough decisions that will follow the election, this was a phony budget concluding the phony campaign. But Alistair Darling set the terms for the real election battleground that surely can only be days away now. Joey Jones, Sky News, Westminster.